let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to start by making a blueprint for our portal. Go ahead and open up a new blueprint. This will be an actor. Name this VP Portal. Let's open that up. And in here, we're going to add a static mesh so that we can see this. I'm just going to use a cube for now. We want to go over to our collision and let's make sure that collision is on no collision. This is just so our player, when they teleport to this area, it won't do anything funky trying to move them outside of this area. And then we're also going to add a collision box. This can be a box, sphere, any any of the, of the shapes, but this is what we'll use for now. Let's make this bigger so we can actually interact with it. And I also want to come over here to the details and let's look for hidden. I want to make this uh, not hidden in the game just so we can see when we're going to overlap with it. Um, that's all we're going to do for the basic look now. In the future episodes, we'll focus on making this look more like a portal. Let's jump over to the event graph for now. Get rid of these. So the first thing we're going to do is actually get all the instances of our portal. We'll be able to drag out as many of these as we want, and we'll add them to our list of portals. So we'll say, get all actors of class. This will be of that BP portal that we just created. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to set this to an array, a variable that we're going to create, and store all of our available portals. So let's go create a new variable and name this all portals. This will be that BP portal class. Reference. And then we need to make this an array. So we're going to pull this out. And we're going to say set portals. We want to set it to all the instances of this class. The next thing we're going to do is we actually need to pass this information from uh, whichever portal you interact with over to our player. So let's go back out here and we want to create a portal interface that we're going to use. Go ahead and open up a Blueprint interface, and we'll just name this uh, Portal Interface. Let's open that up. And in our Portal interface, I'm just going to name this something like Pass Teleport Information. Let's give this an input and an output. We want to be able to pass to our player whether we've just been teleported or not. Uh, this will keep some uh, crazy behaviors from happening for the randomly teleport. This won't be necessary in the future when we add a widget that the player will select the portal to teleport to. But for this example, we need this uh, bull here. We're going to name this was teleported. And then for the next, for the output, we're going to call this character information. And we're going to set this to our third person character, just a reference of that, or whatever character you're using would go there. Um, compile and save that. That's all we need for that for now. Let's jump over to our third person character and let's create the uh, function for this for the past teleport information. So open up whichever character you're going to use and then go to your uh, class settings. First, we need to implement this and look for that portal interface that we just created. 
Go ahead and open that. Then we can open up the past teleport information. And in here, we're going to need a few things. First, we need to add a variable for the was teleported. We also need to be able to know if we can teleport based on that. Um, so I'm just gonna say can teleport. Here we want to set our was teleported variable to this, which is getting passed from our <clears throat> portal blueprint. We wanna come off here and say not. If, uh, if I was just teleported, I'm not going to be able to teleport. So that will be important here. If we go and set this, And then after all of this takes place, we actually want to pass back information to our portal blueprint. We want to pass our character information. So go ahead and say reference self and just pass that into your character information. And that is going to be all we need in our player for now. So go ahead and uh, compile, save that down. Now, if we go back to our portal blueprint, after we save all the instances of the portals, we want to come off here and say, pass teleport information off of our target. We're going to say, get player character. And then once we pass information here, we want to get this character back out and we want to save it so that we can use it later. So we're going to come down to our variables and let's create a new character variable. And this is going to be set to that third person character. This just needs to be a single. And here we can drag this out and say set and then attach that. The next thing we're gonna do is check when we overlap with this box, we need to then pass more teleport information and get our portal that we're going to teleport to. So highlight box here, come down and right click and say, begin overlap and we're going to look for on component begin overlap. We only want this to run if the player can teleport. So let's grab our character reference out, say get, and then ask it if it can teleport. And if this is true, so we'll do a branch off of this. This is true, we want to pass the teleport information. So say pass teleport information. The target is now going to be that character reference. And we want to set this to was teleported. So check the was teleported mark here. If we overlap with a teleport box, we want to, and we are able to teleport, we want to go ahead and mark that we were teleported. Um, next, we're going to do a set timer by uh, function name. This function, uh, this timer will act as kind of a cooldown so we don't teleport instantly. For now, let's set it to five seconds. And we're going to create a function that this will call once the cooldown, once the five seconds goes down. 
and we'll name this something like reset teleport. And for this, we're gonna come down right below this and we're gonna create this function real quick and let's do a custom event and name this reset teleport. And for this, we want to pass teleport information to our character. And we're going to now have this was teleported unmarked. So every five seconds, it will, after being teleported, it will mark it it's saying that we were not teleported. This will allow this to reset so we can use it again later. After we call this timer, we want to grab all of our portals. This is where we'll get the portal that we're going to use. So get all portals. And we don't want the portal that we interact with to be an option. So come out of here and say, remove item. And the item we're going to remove is going to be a reference to itself, the portal that we interact with. So let's come off here and say, reference self. This will remove it from being an option to interact with. You won't be teleported to the portal that you're at. Now, after this, we need to actually get the portal that we want to call. So we're going to come down below this, do another custom event, and we're going to name this get portal. From here, we're going to grab our all portals. And for this example, we just want to do a random out of this array. Um, in the future, we'll set it to where the player can choose uh, which portal to get what to go to, which is obviously more realistic in most games. And once we get one out of here, we want to set this as the portal that we're going to use. So let's add another variable here and let's name this other portal. That will be the destination portal. And this will be a single uh, blueprint portal instance. Go ahead and drag this out and we're gonna set it. Connect that up. Um, one thing we're going to do here, just so that we can see which portal we're about to teleport to, we're going to say print string. And then when we print string, we're going to set it to the name of whatever this portal is. So we need to add another variable here. Make this a, just name it name. And this is going to be set to a text. Go ahead and pull out of here and say get name. So this debug will show us the name of our portal once we uh, cross into the collision box. Let's go back up to our on component begin overlap. And after we've removed the portal that we're at, we're going to call that get portal, which will come down and get the portal that we're actually going to teleport to. After this, at the end of this, we're going to have a, another event called teleport. So come down and create a custom event, name this teleport. We don't want to teleport the moment that we cross the line, so let's add a delay. Uh, we can do just like a two second delay just to show this off. And then from here, we want to get the portal that we're going to teleport to. So pull this out and say get. We want to get this uh, world transform from this portal. So say get world transform. Um, get it for the default scene route since that's what both of these are under. Go ahead and split this uh, struct here. 
And then from here, we want to get our character reference. So get, and we want to set actor uh, transform. Again, split the struct, connect these, and then you're going to connect location to location, rotation to rotation. And for our example, we're not going to change the scale or size of our characters. So we're going to leave those at one and not mess with uh, any, not take the chance of messing with the scale based on the scale of the default scene route, which could be changed. It's probably set to all ones now, but just to minimize that risk, go ahead and compile that and save it. And then after we get our random portal, we want to teleport to that portal. Compile and save that. We still need to come to the class default or class settings here, and we need to implement this portal uh, interface. And the next thing we need to do is go test it. So if we go over our map, go back to our portal, and we pull a couple of these out into the world, we want to set the name. Oh, go to your uh, portal and make name um, open up this little eye so it's visible and public. Compile, save that. And we can set the name for each of these portals we pull out. This person we might call portal one. Let's do one up here, and we'll call this portal two. These don't have to have any specific uh, name. Let's show off just two for now. <clears throat> if I run this and I overlap here, we see in the top left it says portal two. That's the portal it was taking us to. And we're not being teleported just by being in this, but if we leave and go back in, it says portal one. So this will teleport me back and forth between just two. We do have to wait for that five second cooldown before it'll interact again. Portal two. Portal one. Now if we come back out here and we add a third one, Let's just name this one area three. And we'll name this one pond. And then we play this. It'll just teleport us to a random one. So we're going to area three. Give it a few seconds to reset. And now you have a random uh, portal. So that's going to do it for today's episode. In this episode, we set up a basic portal system that teleports the player to a random portal location in an open world environment. In the next episode, we'll work on creating a widget that will list all available portals and allow the user to select their destination. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss future episodes. As always, happy developing, and I'll see you in the next one.